President Biden's being slammed for an out-of-touch comment when pressed on the Nashville school shooter's potential motive. Police say the suspect targeted the Christian school and the massacre was closely planned. The president claims to be consoler in chief, but literally laughed off that this could have been an anti-religious attack. Listen. Wonderful. Republican Senator Josh Hawley blasting Biden before calling on the feds to investigate the shooting as a hate crime. That is totally beneath the dignity of the office of the presidency of the United States. This is a guy, this is an office that has the responsibility of leading this country. Children are dead. This is a terrible, terrible tragedy. Biden should be acknowledging the targeting of people of faith. He should be saluting the law enforcement officers who put their lives on the line and saved hundreds of kids. But he should be saying, we're going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to call it for what it is, a hate crime. And we're going to do a full investigation, make sure it doesn't happen again. And it doesn't end there. The press secretary for Arizona Democratic Governor Katie Hobbs forced to resign this afternoon after appearing to encourage gun violence against transphobes on Twitter. Judge, a part of this show is that when we do a subject like a school shooting, you know, we don't laugh, we don't joke around, we God, treat no. it with respect. No. You'd think the president of the United States could understand decorum. You know, at a time when our country is literally in pain, with one of the most senseless, tragic shooting, the shooting of children in school, the president comes down and starts joking about ice cream. He starts joking about the fact that he's really got some upstairs and Joe Biden is his wife. And then at a time when he can console the country, as you referenced, he should do something to console us. And when he was asked about the issue of this being a hate crime, Look, I don't know if it is or isn't yet because I haven't seen the manifesto, but I'll tell you what, I mentioned this, I don't know, the first day, the second day, I said we've got to look into the issue because you can rest assured if this happened at a synagogue or it happened uh, at a mosque, there would be people asking that question and the president would be saying, well, we're going to look into that. But we live in a day and age, unfortunately, when the, the, the degrading of religion in our society, especially Christian religion, ironically on a day when Merrick Garland is before a congressional committee being asked about whether or not, you know, they were properly prosecuting protesters in the Dobbs decision and the protection of Supreme Court justices on the issue of abortion. You know, all of this comes together. These are not isolated incidents. They really are a reflection of what's going on in the country. And this president, he's a blabbering, he's just blabbering all the time. And he, he could have said, you know what, it's time for us to recognize, forget about the, the, the hate crime issue. We've got red flag laws. If something doesn't make sense, find out about it. Ask questions. Make a phone call. There is a federal red flag law. Most states have a red flag law. We can prevent this. But no, he's just joking about it. If Josh Hawley's in favor, I don't like it. I mean, stop pivoting to politics. It's obvious what you are. I think we do have some of that sound you mentioned of him. Was it referencing ice cream uh, earlier on the day of this uh, tragic event? Let's play that. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband, <laughs> and I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. You think I'm kidding? I'm not. Hey, so, Jessica, he has to know about the shooting at that point because he addressed it a couple right seconds later. Right after. Yeah. So, what's going on? I don't know. I, I, I think it was a very bad thing to do. I think his message on the shooting was strong. He did address how tragic it was. He talked about what he would like to see done. He's been very consistent that he wants the assault weapons ban brought back. Um, it's not in line with the consoler in chief for sure, but I, I don't think, and obviously at the table, I have a different view of this president than a few others, Jillian withstanding, um, who's neutral on the issue. But um, I don't think he should have made it a joke out of any of these. These were incredibly somber moments, and obviously it should be investigated as a hate crime. Whether it turns out to be one or not, you have to consider it, just like where anyone where uh, 
a certain group is known to be, and you're going there and potentially targeting them. We said the same thing after Tree of Life, obviously. I went back to look at the coverage of the horrific shooting in South Carolina, the Emanuel AME Church, where Dylan Roof killed nine black parishioners while they were in Bible study in the basement there. I didn't see the same outrage on the anti-Christian issue and that from the Republicans. It was obviously an attack on black, um, black, black people, people, which he made clear, but it should have been investigated the same way as an attack on Christians because it was at a house of worship. And I hope that they move forward with that. Josh Hawley, though, is so sanctimonious and he is so desperate to get his cable news hits and he did get it off of it and he got to go on and prophetize about this. I think that people need to take a step back from it. And if you want to say the president shouldn't have had this reaction, you know, I can't possibly agree with Josh Hawley about it. So it, it can't be that. That's obviously a bad signal to send. Um, but both sides do this where they put in the punches. Like, remember when Kamala said, I'm not going to get the vaccine because it was like a Trump vaccine. If it's from the scientists, I'll do that. It just sends out a bad message about where our government officials are, um, and I don't like it. I don't know if he's thirsty for airtime. He just well, says it should be investigated as a hate crime. That's all he said. No, he didn't. He said beneath the dignity of the office. Okay. Well, you don't well, think Josh Hawley, does he request to get on your show every day? I don't do the bookings. Okay. Do you think it's an age factor? I mean, you know you get a certain age and you're like, I don't care. I don't, you know, you just kind of, uh, is that what it is, or is he just emotionally detached? I, I don't know. Um, I can't say. But I, I can tell you that I think the joke was problematic on a couple, couple levels. On, like, a tactical level, it was unfortunate because he was making a joke in the aftermath of a tragedy, which is never OK. But at the strategic level, it was interesting because he kind of admitted that he's sometimes making these decisions about things not based on principle, but instead in accordance with the political battle lines. It was sort of like he said that... Out loud. Out loud, uh, without meaning to. And it's interesting because that undercuts him, his own big initiative. It was just last week, right, the whole grand gesture with the veto threat for the D.C. crime bill. You know, he was standing against his party. He was saying, look, I think this is the wrong thing to do, so I'm going to veto this bill. And now he says... Well, whatever Josh Hawley's position is, I'm going to stand on the opposite side. It just it it was dissonant on a whole bunch of levels. I, I don't understand it enough to unpack it. Greg's made some jokes. I believe you should joke after a tragedy. It's one of the most important ways to deal with tragedies. I wouldn't do it on television, but you know, um, I think this story adds another kind of a stupid layer of media clickbait. It's kind of unnecessary. You know, we talk about politicizing these things. This is kind of a politicized idea like oh you know we're, we're going after him for a joke in which he's making a joke about the person right this is exactly what happened with was it a th about three or four weeks ago with the yeah with the mother who's right. two sons yeah, it was about it was that Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Greene yeah. I you know and I'm always you know you know me I'm always about less coverage the better uh in this story so I would rather focus on like something like the body cam footage which if you're gonna do exposure of a story like this that's reality you cannot argue with that right you can't argue with what is on body cam footage you can we can argue the nuances of of, of Joe what Joe Biden says and I think you're right I think it has to do with seeing everything and not really caring at this point but beyond that the best thing to come out of this horrible event was seeing the response of the police officers. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and when, when I talk about how wrong it is to enlarge the spectacle of, of uh, these events, because what it does, it preys into the infamy for future shootings, we know the repetition of material creates behavior. I myself own 100 my pillows. <laughs> you know, so if we're gonna un if we're gonna enlarge oh, the media, that's why you don't want so much coverage. You yeah, think exactly. It encourages. Yes. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. There's enough research for that uh, out there. So if we're gonna enlarge the media spectacle, uh, why not do it for amazing police work instead of a sick killer who wanted the spotlight, who said that they she wanted the, she wanted the spotlight. I would prefer to make great cops, more great cops, and less or fewer pathetic madmen. So if we're going to, if we, I don't think we need stories like these. We could have done an A block. We could have done an A block on how the police are not getting their due. We could have done an A block on that footage 
and not this silliness. And you can watch cops on Fox Nation. That you know what? The way you twisted that into a tease is amazing. Thank you. Greg. That's why you have seven o'clock. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.